Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bono Podcast and welcome to Theory Thursday. Every week we take a bit of a deep dive into an area of Blood Bowl, whether it's stats or strats, we break it down and see what we can learn together to basically try and get better at the game, or at least to understand why we're losing so much. That tends to be my experience. So this week we are going to be looking at combat skills. We're going to be looking at primary combat skills. So that's Wrestle, Block, Juggernaut, and brawler so we are going to have a look in depth at the new brawler skill and try and piece together numerically just how good it is so if you've got a troll who doesn't want to take juggernaut and doesn't want to save 12 spp to take block just how good is he going to be with the brawler skill so let's have a look at our combat skills so combat skills in this case the primary combat skills are those that affect combat so the rolling of block dice there are a few skills that we're going to miss out for now because i feel like they're kind of secondary combat skills um, so frenzy dauntless multiple block and dodge all do influence blocking but not kind of they're not the first tier combat skills it's not the first thing you'd go to if you uh, want to murder stuff so block and wrestle are two of the steadfast combat skills of old if you want to know more about uphill blocking and uphill wrestling we've got another video i think it's another theory thursday where you can kind of break down just how useful wrestle is going to be if you're punching above your weight but the real crux of this video is going to be looking at brawler and juggernaut because those are strength skills so normally your big guys are going to be more inclined to end up with one of those skills and especially now we've got the black orc team brawler is going to be a very popular skill as it's a very popular team so we've got block and wrestle brawler and juggernaut block and wrestle both work on defense that is huge they are omnipresent if you are being blocked or if you are um, being blitzed or whatever then those are going to come in to effect if you've got brawler or jugs they're only going to work if you are doing the blocking for brawler or blitzing for juggernaut but we still need to go through these because like i said when it comes to big guys and basically strength players these are going to be your primary choices i know that you probably know what these skills do but we're just going to go one by one very quickly and just kind of talk through what they do so block is a general skill when a both down result is applied during a block action this player may choose to ignore it and not be knocked down so whether you're being blocked or doing the blocking both down result means you stay standing which is very useful wrestle is also a general skill this player may use this skill when a both down result is applied either when they perform a block action or when they are the target of a block action instead of applying the both down result as normal and regardless of any other skills either player possesses both players are placed prone so wrestle is a massively useful skill to drag your opponent down with you without causing a turnover if you have the ball and you use wrestle that will be a turnover on your turn but it's it's a great skill for sacking the ball carrier so if your opponent has the ball and you've got somebody with wrestle who's going to get a one or two die block it, they can grapple them to the ground regardless of whether they've got sure hands regardless of whether they've got block you will drag them to the ground and that ball is going to pop out and it will not end your turn so that is kind of why wrestle is so important it's also a really good defensive skill um, if you don't want to get punched in the face an awful lot so it can kind of protect your player ever so slightly so it is kind of it's a great alternative to block they've both got their massive advantages players with jump up or players with a lot of movement are going to love wrestle because it's not going to impact them very much and sometimes wrestling a big guy or a slow player to the ground looking at you dwarf blockers is going to be brutal because even if they get up they're only going to be moving a couple of squares so wrestle is key kind of from a new uh, from a maneuverability point of view whereas block is great to just maim okay so brawler is the new skill here it is a strength type skill so brawler when this player performs a block action on its own but not as part of a blitz action this player may re-roll a single both down result so this is of no use in your opponent's turn it is of no use when you are blitzing which can be um, a bit frustrating however if you are making a block and you are punching some dudes and you don't have the block skill you roll a both down you get to re-roll it so there's a couple of advantages here and we're going to look at this in a minute when we go through some of the stats 
If you are fighting against someone with dodge, if you are fighting against someone with block or wrestle, this is going to give you another chance to roll a pow. So not only is it effective in basically, you know, saving yourself from a turnover when you roll a both down, it also does give you another chance to knock them down. So it is ever so slightly, like it's got that advantage to it, which is why the brawler skill is going to be quite useful in this format. If they've got dodge, if you've got frenzy, for example, and this this will only work if you are sort of um, block frenzying, not if you're blitzing. But the potential here to re-roll that both down into a push or into a pow is going to mean that over the course of a lifetime, you are probably going to score more SPP because you're going to be decking your opponent more. And lastly, we have Jugs. So Juggernaut is also a strength skill. This one you will see primarily on things like Minotaurs and stuff because it's so good for blitzing. So when this player performs a block action as part of a blitz action, but not on its own, so only when you're blitzing, this uh, they may choose to treat a both down result as a push back result instead. In addition, when this player performs a block action as part of a blitz action, the target of the block action may not use fend, stand firm or wrestle. So Juggernaut is just going to push through your opponent. So it kind of it protects you against um, turnovers. But it's also really useful if you've got Frenzy, because those pushes are going to push your opponent back and then you're going to get a follow up block. That's why Jugs is so great on a player such as a Minotaur who loves blitzing because they're blitzing at strength six, which means they're always getting two dice, which means essentially if you can ensure yourself through Jugs the opportunity to push your opponent into a second block, it really kind of turns that two die block into a four die block that greatly, greatly increases your chances of rolling that sweet, sweet star and knocking whoever it is to the ground. So now we're going to go through some of the skills, look at the kind of die blocks you get um, and see how effective it is. So we need a benchmark for that. So these are the stats. This is the numbers element of having no skills at all. So we're going to go through a series of dies. The dies are the style of block. So if you have the same strength as your opponent, it's one dice. If you've got more strength, it's two dice. If you've got more than double strength, it's three dice. Basically, you roll your die pool, you choose which result you want, which can be really great. The downside is if your opponent has more strength than you in this block, you roll two dice and they choose. If, yeah, if they've got more than double your strength, it's three dice and they choose. So this is very, very bad. So you've got no skills at all. It doesn't matter if your opponent's got block or not. What we're saying is that you are looking to punch them to the ground, not avoid a turnover, not just bring them down as a ball carrier. Again, we've co covered that in another video. This is you are looking to pow or pow star them down. Okay, so that's the star or the star with the exclamation mark. Defender stumbles. So with a one die block, you've got a 33% chance. That makes sense. It's a star or a star pow. With two dice, you've got a 55% chance. You're rolling two dice. You only need a star or a pow to appear on either of them. Okay, that's pretty good odds. This is where it gets really tasty though. A three die block gives you a 70% chance. This is all before rerolls. A 70% chance of destroying your opponent and smashing them to the ground so whether you're picking on someone smaller than you being brave and getting up on someone bigger or really just trying to take out the ball carrier powering them down 70 percent chance with a three die block now if you are brave in it if you are stunty blocking if you are just taking that opportunistic block yeah i'm going to take a gamble here minus two dice 11 percent chance of pulling it off and uh, knocking your opponent down without also both downing yourself and if you are just going to be a true hero okay you're going for a snotling cage dive blitz here 3.7 percent chance that's going to work so that means that almost four times in a hundred you're going to be able to pull off that sweet three die hit I have done it many times with my leaping skaven gutter runners and it is horrible and if you pull it off you will lose friends but win games. So at the top of the video we said the block and wrestle are your premium combat skills and this is why. So the great thing about block and wrestle is they both work the same. So for the for the results on this chart we're going to treat powers and power stars as very good things and both downs as good things as well. Sure you won't roll armor if you've got wrestle and if you've got block and they've got block nothing's going to happen but we're going to assume that your target doesn't have block or you're happy with uh that result being okay so we're looking here now for pow pow star and both down results so one die block 
50% chance of your opponent being brought to the ground, essentially. Two die block goes up to 75%, and the sweet three die block with the block advantage, 82.5% chance. This is without rerolls. So if you can swing a two die block here with block, that's a 75% chance of your opponent being brought down unless they've got block or wrestle to escape that. Okay? Now, if you want to know how dodge affects this, basically just go back to the, the no skills chart and apply that. Um, and if you are going to take up, so this is it. This is the dwarf playbook here. Dwarf uh, blockers. Their armor 10 plus, their strength 3, they start with block, tackle, and thick skull. So they can risk a one die block. They can risk a two die negative block. A lot of the time, because they've got the armor and thick skull there. So if it does go wrong at the end of a turn, you take a cheeky punt on a two die negative block. If they go down, your opponent's got to roll an 11 or 12 to even break their armor. And then, because they've got thick skull, the chance of them being knocked... Basically, they just need to roll a 9 plus. So it's going to be 11, 12, and then a 9 plus. So the chances of the dwarf blocker being removed from the pitch is so small that this is often worth it. Now, it is a 25% chance of taking your opponent down if you've got block on a negative 2 die block. 1 in 4 times, that's going to work. That's really not bad. Now, I wouldn't recommend uh, just free rolling two die up blocks whenever you feel like it, but sometimes it's worth it. If you've got two dwarf blockers in a scrum and one has a chance at a cheeky two die block against a war dancer, not sure that's going to work, but you know, against a thrower, against someone who's important to your opponent, and it's going to be a negative two die, or even just to pow down uh, their minotaur. You know, to stop their big guy from being very useful, the Beast of Nurgle or something like that, to, to get away. Two die up with block or wrestle, 25% chance of dragging them down. Three die gets a little bit worse, one in eight chance of uh, knocking your opponent down to the ground. But that's still not terrible if you're going to be risky, okay? That is a massive risk. That's why it's in red, guys, because that's bad times. But they're probably not as bad as you'd think. And that's the strength here with block and wrestle. Is you just go from, I can't remember what it was in the other, like 3% or something, to this. Which is still not great. So you know that if it's a 2 die block and you've got block, 1 in 4 times that's going to work out brilliantly for you. Okay, not just survive, brilliantly. And we'll go through the stats here with rerolls as well. Because in Blood Bowl 2020, the restriction on one reroll a turn is gone so if you've got uh, two or three rerolls you can actually just shoot them all off in one turn can't reroll the same dice uh, but you know if you reroll that catch over there you can reroll a block over here so with a reroll and block or wrestle to knock your opponent down assuming they don't have block or dodge or anything complicated okay one dice 75 percent chance of knocking them to the ground okay this is why dwarf coaches with re-rolls are happy to just take that one die block because 75 percent of the time it works all the time and it's going to power your opponent to the ground two dice 93 percent three dice with a re-roll 97 percent so if you've ever taken a two die or three die block with block and felt good about it and been stung you should feel sore about it because you should have great odds at surviving that and sometimes Nuffle has other plans for you. But like we said in the last one, actually there's a 44% chance of you pulling it off if you're taking a two die up block and you've got a reroll. Okay, so like I said, if you want to take that optimistic block on your Minotaur or if your ball carrier, if their ball carrier is just surrounded by a ton of guard, 44% with block and a reroll. Three dice gets a bit ropey, but 23% with block and a reroll means that one in four times a three die up block with a reroll, if you've got a combat skill, is going to work. One in four times. Basically, one in two times a two die up block with a reroll and a combat skill, a primary combat skill, is going to take your opponent down. This red playbook here is risky. Blood Bowl is a risk management game. So if you are making your opponent make tough rolls, make tough positioning, every now and again you can afford to spend your luck points and go for one of these solid, strong, optimistic plays. But that is not why you're here. You already know that block is great, okay? You already know that block is one of the best skills in the game, if not the best skill. What you are here to see, I imagine, is Brawler. So now we're going to have a look at this awesome new skill. Now, I'm a huge fan of it. I've played uh, quite a few games with the Black Orc team now, and I am a huge fan of it. We'll come to why, really, in a second. So the whole 
thing with the brawler skill is you roll your block dice merrily and if you've got a both down result in your die pool you can re-roll it for free no loner nothing the downside is if you re-roll any of your die pool you can no longer use the team re-roll so the best way to use the brawler skill will not surprise any of you if you roll a push and a both down that both down result is just a free roll to try and roll another pal okay if you roll both down both down then it gets a bit saucy but you still got a chance to get out of dodge now what you can do is take a one die block with brawler which doesn't normally happen with black orcs so this isn't going to come up very often this is going to be a black orc punching another strength four player this is going to be a troll punching a player who's got a bunch of guard around it that kind of thing your big guy's got that brawler skill or you just got your black orcs in a bit of a brawl there you go clever wordplay that's what you're here for so brawler one die block okay there's a 17 percent chance of rolling that both down which means there's a 17 percent chance of re-rolling it okay which gives you essentially two-thirds of one-sixth chance to get a better result than simply one-six bad so one in six is going to be a skull skulls are skulls for days okay but that both down is only going to be a both down a third of the time okay it's going to be both down or a skull a third of the time so it goes from being one third of a time when you're single die blocking it going badly to you know one sixth and one third of a sixth okay which means if you're taking the block here so you're looking for a pow or pow star one die block punching a dude down you've got the brawler skill one die 33 percent with no skills okay brawler takes that up to 39 percent not a great improvement but it is going to save you every now and again now i didn't and haven't managed to make a lot of one die blocks with brawler just because the guys who take brawler normally are always getting two dice which we'll come to in the next slide compare that to block with a single dice and the block is going to go well for you basically 50 percent of the time we're assuming your opponent doesn't have both down doesn't have block or wrestle so assuming you are one die punching somebody who does not have a primary combat skill no skills 33 percent of the time they're going to go down brawler 39 percent and block 50 percent so brawler not as good as block but better than nothing but this is where you're going to be living, okay? So normally, your guy is going to have strength 4, strength 5. With Brawler, you're going to get two dice all the live long day. So Brawler with two dice. Normal blocking, 55%. Brawler, 62%. And block, 75 So again, we can see that block is the king, the king of key combat skills, okay? No surprise there. But you do get a hefty improvement inefficiency there with the brawler skill so when it comes to black orcs the majority of the time you're going to be making two die blocks and it is going to feel great okay because you have to essentially double both down and then roll another skull or a both down for your two die block to go wrong that is great but moreover than that more often than that you're going to roll push and you're going to roll that skull uh, that both down sorry and you're going to get to just roll it. it a lot of the time it feels like you're making three die blocks because you kind of are you kind of get to roll three dice when you get that two die block with the both down if you get a both down on either of your dice you are for all intents and purposes actually making a three die block so it massively ramps up the chance of you rolling a natural pal and when you combine Frenzy with Brawler, that's when it, it it's going to get good. Now, the downside is with Black Orcs, they can't take Frenzy because they've got Grab. But if you look at your Ogre, okay, if you've got an Ogre, or if you um, your Rat Ogre is taking Brawler, this just gives you more chances to roll pushes. And pushes mean more blocks, and more blocks mean more pals, and more pals mean more casualties so here we go so 55 with no skills 62 percent with brawler 75 percent with block block is great brawler 62 definitely sitting in the middle and then you have the greed block okay so the thing is with the brawler skill it doesn't necessarily get better and better and better the more dice you throw uh, but the more dice you throw the more chance you're going to get to choose to re-roll a both down so this is basically the only way you can take a three die block and roll four block dice that's pretty lush right we've wanted a four die block forever 
we haven't really but you know this is the best way to pretend to do it so three die block here with no skills 70 percent three die block with brawler 76.1 percent and block itself three die block 82.5% chance. This is of smashing your opponent to the ground. So this is where that window really closes. There's only 6% in it. 70% chance you're going to knock your opponent down. What this really does is it just gives you that extra opportunity to roll that pow. And when you are rolling three dice already, getting a just basically half the time, you're going to get a chance to free roll an extra dice and just choose whichever one you want. I have yet to fail a three die brawler roll. It's gonna happen, and then you have basically the the the, the biggest bragging rights ever that you failed a four die block. But most of the time, you're gonna be able when you are rolling four individual block dice, you're gonna be able to get that natural pow. Think about it. Four chances to roll a straight pow. This is gonna murder people. So we've looked at Brawler in a situation where you're making an actual block with one, two or three dice. Now what we're going to do is just have a look at all of these core primary combat skills, whatever I've decided to call them throughout the video, and we'll look at just what the odds are that it's going to go wrong. And the reason for that is because that's kind of Juggernaut's primary purpose. Okay, when you're blitzing, it saves you from both down results. It also happens to combo really well with Frenzy. Um, and kind of a similar thing with, with Brawler, although that both down reroll gets you a chance to get a different result, the kind of result that you're after. So combat skills here. Turnover, that's what we're looking at. No skills here at all. So you're looking for a skull that are both down. So one in three chance with a one die block with no skills, you're going down, okay? Turnover time. Two dice, it's an 11% chance. Three dice, it's a 3.7% chance of a turnover. So even if you are making an unskilled block, so um, big and blockers, chaos warriors, before they get a combat skill, 11% chance with that two die block uh, of it going wrong. That's not so bad, one in nine, okay. If you're making those uh, brave blocks though, if you're making a negative two dice block, so you're punching somebody stronger than yourself, you've got no combat skills, 55.6% of the time you're going to suffer a turnover and if you're really going for it, 70.5% chance of getting a turnover if you're rolling that sweet three die up block. Enter the combat skills. So block, wrestle and jugs are all going to save you from both down. So. We've got Jugs here, Juggernaut, so we're going to pretend that you are blitzing in this situation. Okay, so you are basically just trying to avoid skulls. One dice, one in six chance of it going wrong. Two die block, 2.8% chance. So if you're blitzing with Juggernaut and on a two die block, if you've got a dwarf blocker who's just surrounded by guard and beating up on somebody smaller than himself, 2.8% chance of a turnover. That is awesome. Three die block is 0.5%, so less than 1% for that three die block to go wrong. It still can. Everybody's seen the triple skull. It's just awful. In fact, we it's so bad, we tend to give spot prizes away in our tournament for it because it's just such a feel bad. If you, yeah, one in every 200 blocks is a triple skull. That person deserves a prize. All right, even with block, wrestle, jugs, two die negative block is going to fail you. 30% of the time and a three die negative block is going to fail you 42% of the time not just the answer to the universe and everything it's also what are my odds of dying if I punch somebody three times bigger than me then there's brawler so brawler gives you the chance to re-roll one of you both down so if it goes wrong maybe you'll get out of dodge maybe you'll go push both down re-roll that both down into a pow which your opponent will ignore anyway chances of a turnover using brawler Skull both down is what we're looking at, but the both down is less of a result. So one die, there is a 22.7% chance of a turnover happening. Compare that to the uh, chances of success, which I think was something like 38%, you are better off. If you're going to take a one die block and you've got Brawler, you are going to win more than you are going to lose. And then you've got the pushes in the middle. Two dice, 5.6% chance and three dice, 1.5% chance. So Brawler is three times as likely to let you down when making a three die block than it is to have the block skill. But that's still only going to be 1.5% of the time. These were complicated as heck to figure out. So if I've got the numbers uh, a little bit wrong, forgive me. 
that it was just not fun <laughs> and i love numbers okay negative two die block with brawler 45 percent of the time it's going to go badly and three die block with brawler 63 percent of the time it's going to go badly so we're going to do a bit of a debrief here because there was a lot of numbers and a lot of kind of individual circumstances when it comes to combat in blood bowl there are so many individual inputs that it means that your network of potential possibilities and outcomes are almost limitless okay block is going to defend you it is going to be very good if you're blitzing and it's going to be very good if you're blocking okay it gets the full trifecta wrestle is going to be very helpful if you are trying to sack the ball carrier or just drag somebody down wrestle is going to be less useful on defense, it could be quite fun to drag somebody down with you if you are getting blitzed. Um, realistically, though, it's there to pop the ball out or just slow down your opponent. Wrestle is less good than block, but statistically, it's going to do the same thing. And it does play a little bit of a trump card to those people who have block. So if you are in a block heavy meta, taking a few wrestle guys is going to be able to override their block and scupper their game plan quite a lot. So block and wrestle are even, really. Okay, block is generally speaking going to do more damage. Wrestle is going to do less damage, but it's going to trump block. It's a really interesting dynamic of two skills there. So picking either one of those is going to be fine. If you've got a mighty blow guy, if you've got somebody with strength who's going to be rolling a lot of dice, block is going to be better because it's going to give you more opportunity to just destroy people and that's going to get you spps if you are more of a tactical attacker then wrestle is going to be great so maybe higher agility one-off players for wrestle or just a couple of linemen to help pull down the side of a cage for example now these skills here are interesting jugs has historically been really simple okay if you are going to blitz with somebody take juggernaut if they've got frenzy take juggernaut if they've got horns take juggernaut okay these are all skills that tend to um, get better with that skill so juggernaut's going to help the minotaurs of the world it's a strength skill which means it's it's not as good as block but it's going to be half as easy to get and that in itself is a massive massive boon brawler is a very interesting one okay the times you take brawler are going to be i think far and few between when it comes to big guys guys who are going to be blitzing so someone with horns so minotaurs and potentially rat ogres juggernaut is going to be better they've both got decent movement they're both going to be able to maneuver around and strike where they want and that juggernaut is going to help them blitz now if you're taking a frenzy blitz is going to help but i think brawler is going to be the kind of skill that shows up on basically gigantic blockers okay big guy blockers are going to love the brawler skill now we saw it is essentially half as effective as block okay but that's still more effective than no block so the right thing to do in every circumstance is to save up to 12 spp to get block the more block you have the more blocks are going to work but if you don't have the time to save up for block if you take a random strength and you end up with brawler Brawler is still much better than no combat skills at all. It's not going to do anything on defense, not going to do anything when you blitz. But if you've got a player that is on the line fighting turn after turn after turn and it makes 16 blocks a game, you're going to get three more POWs across that game than you would normally. And that can be an extra six SPP. The difficulty is once you've got Brawler, you probably don't want to take Block. Okay, they're kind of redundant at that point. Juggernaut works okay with them, Block and Wrestle. These all kind of end up being a bit redundant if you take both. And that kind of is why this is its group on its own. It's because a player with Brock doesn't, a Block doesn't often take Wrestle. You know, Juggernaut and Block works well on a big striking player. So like a Minotaur, but at that point, that Block... Uh, it kind of supersedes Juggernaut because it's probably going to take your opponent down. Juggernaut kind of tends to come in later in a league, way later in a league when everybody's got block. That Juggernaut is going to trump it and so is Wrestle to a standard. This is the best skill in the game. Block is for the win. Wrestle is a tactical aid. Juggernaut is going to make your blitzing big guys better and Brawler is going to make your blocking big guys more reliable.
that is essentially the breakdown of these skills and hopefully you can see why multiple block frenzy dauntless things like that i've left out because this is most of the game okay this is hurting your opponent and every one of these skills either protects you from being hurt or causes your opponents to be hurt when you are choosing to try and that's why they're so key um and they're all individual they all bring their own thing which is really sweet um, and that's just one thing to take away from this is that while block is strictly better than brawler there are going to be times where that brawler reroll gets you an extra pow and takes out that stunty player takes out that war dancer who's got block and dodge and you need to roll just a sweet pow two die brawler reroll that both down into a pow because you've snuck that extra die roll in there brawler is going to help you in that situation and that's the great thing here about all these skills block is best but there's still a place for the rest Anyway, guys, thank you ever so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you've got any thoughts on these skills here and what you want to see us do next on Theory Thursday. But for now, I'm going to disappear and we'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl content. Happy blocking slash wrestling slash brawling slash juggernauting. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to support the show even further, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Or come and join us in our Patreon uh, link below where you get early access to our content and monthly competitions. See you later.